Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up RPCS3, which is a PlayStation 3 emulator on your Windows machine. And this is the 2022 full setup guide. So I know a few things have changed since the last time I created my setup video. So I thought I'll create another one. A lot of people have requested this. Just want to say Happy New Year and let's get started. So just Google RPCS3 and go to the top website and don't worry i will actually provide links to everything that you need and you just go to download if there's an appear there there's a button right there and from here scroll down download for windows or linux for us it's windows i'll do a separate video for linux as well and we'll let that download while we're here what you can do is go to compatibility depending on what game you're going to play check if it's you know compatible or not so this says these particular games are playable and the game I'm going to be trying is Resistance, I forgot to R, and I know it's actually on page 3 because I've already checked. And if we scroll down, Resistance, Fallen Man, here we go. It is playable, fantastic, and if you click on it, it'll take you to the wiki for RPCS3, and they'll give you a little synops synopsis, synopsis? synopsis of the game, and some information like, you know, how Wikipedia does, but then you'll give you some information about how the game runs and if there's any known issues, etc. And you can check that out. And sometimes there's some information about patches or you know things that you can do to improve the performance of the game as well. So, I highly recommend that you check that out. Another cool thing to check out is the roadmap. And in the roadmap, it just covers essentially you know what features are up and coming and if they're short term, long term or medium term and you know, never ending goals as well. You can also check up, check the GitHub page out which actually has the source code. So if you want to contribute, feel free to do so via here and you've got the emulator, you know, email address so you can email them if you have any questions that you can't, you know, answer from us. There's their Discord page as well and there's some frequently asked questions. So, okay, that looks all good. And what we need now is the PS3 firmware. So if you Google PS3 firmware and spell it correctly, and just go to the you know the top website, I'll put it you know in the description as well. If you want the latest version, click download. For some reason, I found sometimes when you click it, especially on Chrome, it doesn't download. Easy way to overcome that if you have the issue on any browser, right click it, save link as, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. I've already got it saved because it's a, a slightly big file and I didn't want to do it on camera. So I'll click cancel. That's that done. Next, what we need is 7-zip or something else that can extract 7-zip files as well because the RPCS3 file that we downloaded is you know, a 7-zip format. So just download 64 bits. Um, do, 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 do. you need 64 bit for the emulator anyway so you're going to be on a 64 bit version of your operating system and double click this and now let's just install it it's defaulted here because it's already detected that i've already got it so click install that's installed now we can actually right click rpcs3 go to 7-zip extract 2 and you'll extract it to a little folder here. And now what we can do is open this up, go to rpcs3.exe. And again, this is just saying, RPS3 does not condone piracy. You must dump your own game. I want to reiterate that. This video that I'm creating right now does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes. What you do with this video is totally up to you, but I am not condoning piracy. And so you just click that and click continue. If you don't want this to appear again just click do not show again and here we go it's all launched up so now what we need to do is install the firmware you go to file install firmware and go to where you downloaded it double click and just let it do its thing and now you'll start compiling the ppu modules so we can just wait for that to do its thing I'll put that over here. While it does that, I'll show you a few other things that you can do. So in configuration, if you go to the CPU, for example, there's some settings you can mess about with here. For the most part, unless you really know what you're doing, I would recommend that you leave these as 
default, go to GPU in here. You could change the renderer down to OpenGL if you have some issues with a Vulkan. If you have more, more than one graphics device card, you can change that here. So you can mess around with aspect ratios, that sort of stuff as well. There's a default resolution here. This isn't something that you really want to change. If you want to in, try and increase the resolution, if you think your computer can handle it, another thing, RPCS3 is a beast. It requires a behemoth of a computer, and especially on the CPU side. And that's the reason I recommend try game map by default. If you seem to be running okay, feel free to increase the resolution scale and see how it runs, you know, based on that. And there's a few other features that you can modify as well. If you're going audio, you can audio channels surround 7.1 because PS3 did support up to 7.1, which is pretty cool. Then mix the stereo, then mix the 5.1. It's only a stereo for me because I've only got two speakers connected, but feel free to change those settings as well. So you can do camera input as well if you have some sort of system connected. You can change the system, you know, settings. You can change the network so you can connect and try and you know, simulate that, which is some pretty cool stuff right here. And like I said, most of this you will leave as default and only mess around with if you know what you're doing. Another thing is if you go to configuration, pads, you can configure your pads. And up to seven players, because remember, PS3 supported up to seven players. And it had you know LED indicators for one, two, three, four. And if you had more than four, you know, if controllers five, six, and seven would be literally two of the LEDs combined, so two on at the same time. So for seven, it'd be four and three, you know, both on, which was pretty darn cool, especially for a game that really supported it. And here you can configure each controller. You can configure it using a keyboard or DualShock 3, 4, DualSense, which is PS5, X input, which is Xbox, and your joystick as well. So if you want to configure one of them, just select which one you want. You can click refresh if you've just connected it and it doesn't appear. So if I click that and I press F, now F is mapped to the up on the D-pad. I'm going to go back to up being mapped to it. And that's really it for the you know configuration. You can you know mess around with the device class. So if you want to play a specific game, let's say like Guitar Hero, you can change it for that. And... I mean, that's really it. you can increase the acceleration and dead zone that's stuff that you mess around with once you've got it working and you can tweak it profiles is a pretty cool thing so if let's say you're playing a fps you might want a certain profile if you're playing an rpg you might want a certain profile you might have a certain profile just for a particular game which is really cool so just click save once you're done so the save button is very important save and there we go Okie dokie, and apart from that, if you go to manage, you can check save data, you can check you know trophies, you can check game patches and screenshots as well. For the game, before I show you the game patches, let me just add some games. So you go to file, go to add games, and you just choose the folder where all your games are located. Best to have them in a single folder, and for me, I know it's over here games ps3 select folder there we go they've all appeared and they give you a bit of information about it as well so if we scroll it gives you the category if playstation move is supported supported resolutions and the compatibility so this is the most you know compatible in the games that i've got on my system is resistance fall of man so make sure you own all games you are playing for legal purposes and if you go to manage again Go to game patches and make sure you select only show old games. If you do not, what's going to happen is going to download a bunch of patches for games that you don't know and you don't want that. Select that, click download latest patches and here we go. And then from here, you can open one of these up and, you know, apply some cool settings like unlock FPS for Resistance Fallen Man, on, you know, 60 FPS for Uncharted 2 and Mung Thieves, debug menu, all sorts of stuff. I'll leave you as default. But once you've you know selected what you that you want, for example, then you just click apply and save. And so yeah, let's launch up a game. So we can just double click it, you can click play. There's a bunch of different ways of doing it. So you'll just compile the PPU modules. This will just take a bit of time 
you know the first time you do it per game so you just it's one of the things you gotta be patient with unfortunately but there's a lot of you know work that's gone into this emulator and oh, i think it's worth the wait so again make sure you have a powerful system if you're trying to do this on some computer that's virtually like a potato you're not gonna you know, have much luck unfortunately I've seen people try to do it on really poor machines and people do have poor experiences as a result. So yes, yeah, again, just a waiting game. You just got to wait. I'll just get it into, you know, the intro and then I'll wrap the video up because, you know, you can go into a game, you can load that up that all works fine you know i've tested it and you, you know you can see that as well that's not an issue but obviously make sure you check the compatibility list because you might you know try and play a game it might crash it might not run properly it might not load at all and it, that game might just not be compatible yet the compatibility is improving all the time remember when i first started looking into this emulator a few years back the compatibility was you know a lot lower than it is now but now there's a lot more games that are playable remember resistance was not very compatible back in the day so it's come a long way Uh, here we go. Resistance Fall of Man. I love this game so much. Uh, comment, you know, what game you're going to go and play first. For me, Resistance is definitely up there. Motorstorm, Killzone 2, Lobby Planet. Those are, you know, those are the games I remember playing as a kid, you know, on PlayStation 3. Those are the games that can, you know, you know, I have the most fondest memories of and as you can see we are you know in the menu and it is loading up and it's, again this is just creating some saved data and that happens depending on what game you're playing it might take a little longer on some games and there we go we can you know check all this stuff out but that's it if you have you know any questions Feel free to uh, plug this down now. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to message us and post in the Discord group. There's a link in the description. There's an RPTS free channel, so feel free to post directly, and then you'll get the best support in that. And I'll be creating videos on how to connect different game controllers. I know my previous videos on that have been very successful and people have loved them. So like connecting Xbox controllers, PlayStation controllers, or even done Nintendo Switch, that sort of stuff. So I'll do all that so you can see how to connect a controller and you know any limitations with said controller as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And I hope you have a great new year and you get to play some PS3 games. Bye bye.